Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with another Mixed Media Fun Art Journal page. Uh, I actually did a video on this, but it was too long, and I didn't feel like you were getting enough content, um, so I'm redoing it, and I'm going to make it much more concise. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do a lot of tips and tricks today. I want to address the problem of bleeding inkjet printer ink. So I printed this off um, from my printer a little while ago, and then I'm just going to take a piece of paraffin wax. You can get it at the grocery store. Um, you can get it at the craft store for making candles. It's just plain wax. You can even use an old white crayon or an old candle. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make a buffer on your paper so that you can um, use sprays and inks over it and not have to worry about your ink smearing. So I'm just, I'm being pretty generous with this, uh, with this wax. Now, if I hold it to the light, or shake off the crumbs, I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit shiny there. All right, so watch this. When you hit it with the heat gun, it's going to make that wax absorb into the paper. It'll get kind of wet looking for a second, and then it will um, just disappear. And that's going to sink in there and protect your ink and also make it so that um, it will take a little bit of color. It's not going to take as much color as if you just scribbled the wax on top and left it, but it will get a little bit of a staining, which is kind of cool, I think. All right. All right, now we've got a nice matte piece of paper again. All right, now I want to show you some watercolor techniques. I'm just going to use um, watercolors from my regular watercolor paint set that I use for tutorials. And I want to do um, a rainbow type uh, motif like I did on the other on the uh, other pages I just showed you. So you see, you can see where the wax was, where the wax is still actually. I'm just going to go in and put some nice vivid color in there. It's kind of fun to work on top of your journal because if any splashes do go out, it'll just kind of add to the character of the page and kind of give it a really fun look, I think. Just fill it in there. Now, a fun technique that you can do with um, with a watercolor background is to drip some alcohol on there. It'll give it a really, really cool look. I feel like I want a little more green in there or something. There. Oh, I like that. Nice, nice and rainbowy. Now I can just take a um, pipette and some regular drugstore rubbing alcohol. This is just the 70% stuff, and I can just drop-ons and get some really cool um, water drop effects. And a lot of this will be cut off, but it's kind of a fun technique to try. All right, and then um, after it dries, you can kind of wipe off any of the um, the paint that's kind of on top of the wax if you don't want it there. So I'm going to set that aside to dry, and the next technique I'm going to show you, I like to call two-for-one stenciling, because you get two pages for one um, for one effort, I guess. And this is a new stencil. Um, I bought a, bought a bunch of these die cuts with a view, the 12 by 12 stencils. Um, I saw them at joanne.com for $5 for $4.99 and I almost bought them, but I'm like, you know, I bet they're going to go on sale. $5 is a great price because they're normally stencils this size go for $10 to $15. Um, but I waited and they went on sale for 40% off. So I'm totally, I was totally excited. I got that for $2.99 and a few others. Uh, so I'm going to use a uh, spray ink. So I want to use my Dollar Tree cutting mats to protect the um, pages on either side. So to do that, I'm just going to lift it up and set it in, and that just prevents me from any glue or spray from getting onto the other pages. And then I am going to go ahead with my spray inks that I have a tutorial on um, on my YouTube channel, if you want to check that out. And I'm just going to, again, do kind of like a rainbow uh, pattern here. I'm just going to use those three colors of ink because that'll give me, um, that'll blend and give me the nice colors that I want. Get some nice purples and some reds. All right, so the two for one, the two for one special, you fold that in half and then um, just kind of press it down. There we go. And I gotta pick that up. And then you get two backgrounds for the price of one, which I think is really nifty. And then um, since I did use ink on this stencil, I will mist it with some water and wipe it off. If I'm using acrylics, I tend to just let it dry and have it stained. I don't really care. It doesn't bother me too bad. This is the page we're going to work on here. Um, I am going to pause the video and dry this so that I'm not smearing ink everywhere, and we'll be right back after that. 
All right, so I actually went ahead and uh, also, after drawing this, dried my words and cut them out so that I would have them ready there as well. So I'm not going to work on this side of the page. I just wanted to show you how it looked all dried. Really, really pretty. I'm going to put another um, page protector here, and I'm actually going to use that to set my supplies on so I'll have them handy and so that you can see what I'm working on. So I got some uh, water base markers there. I've got some rubber stamps. I have some little alphabet stamps. And I've got some stays on black ink. I also have some, we already saw the sprays. I don't think I'm gonna be using those again. Um, I got some gesso, which I may or may not use. I think I probably will use that. And um, I have some adhesive. I have both Yes Paste and Mod Podge. So looking at these wax, um, these wax letters, the wax really didn't seep to the, th through to the back so I can use Mod Podge to adhere this. If I had like used a couple layers of wax, like melted it and then waxed it again and melting it, melted it again, then I would need to use a Yes Paste, but I think I'll be fine using Mod Podge for this. So the next step will be to ink all of the edges on all your, on all your little panels. And uh, here's a little tip. I'm using stays on so that when I Mod Podge it, uh, the ink won't run. And um, if I decide to use any sprays over it, it won't run. But if, you're, if your stays on ink pad, it gets really dry feeling. All you need to do is take a little um, denatured alcohol and just put about a teaspoon of it on your, on your pad and it will um, loosen up that ink that's uh, been dried in there. You do occasionally need to re-ink it, but I find most of the time I just need to add a little bit of... Um, little bit of alcohol to that. So I want you to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to put a little bit of gesso down here on the bottom because I know I want to do some stamping there and I want it to, um, I want to make sure that it's going to really show up and the ink will be nice and bright. So I'm just going to use a little palette knife to just kind of spread a little bit of gesso there. It's not going to do much other than just to give me some tooth and kind of make that pattern a little bit softer down there. Um, this gesso is, I'm using it really thin. It's a, it was just some really cheap pro art gesso I got like 100 years ago and it's, it didn't get chunky in the can or anything, it's still fine, it's just really, really inexpensive gesso. So I'm just uh, scraping a little bit of that across the bottom. I'm going to let that dry and I'm also going to ink up the edges of the rest of these and we'll come back and carry on from there. To adhere my um, journaling, I am just putting a little Mod Podge on the back of these strips. That's also handy to have your cutting mat there. Um, and the quote is by Mark Chagall, and it says, all colors are the friends of their neighbors and the lovers of their opposites. And that's so true. And I love it. And I mean, you know, you look on the color wheel, the color on the opposite is a complementary color. They make each other stand out. They bring out the best, um, in the opposite colors. And they also, colors also go really well with their, um, with their neighbors on either side of them on the color wheel. So that's also a little color theory thing that you can kind of follow away in the gray matter and um, pull that out whenever you're stuck with uh, wondering what colors to use. You get the most passionate combination if you use the colors across from the color wheel and the most harmonious ones if you use the ones next to, the, to each other on the color wheel. So yeah, this is sticking better than the last time because the other time I actually had two coats of wax on it because uh, I was really nervous that the colors would run. And it did keep the colors a little bit brighter, but it did keep it from wanting to glue, be able to be glued down. Um, I had another question that was, I get some really great questions um, on art and journaling and mixed media and stuff. Um, one question was, I don't have Aquanet. Can I use fixative in my journal? Well, absolutely. The Aquanet is kind of like a, a poor man's fixative. So absolutely use either. And if you want to Mod Podge over the entire design, you can spray it with either Aquanet hairspray or any other really cheap hairspray. Um, Cause the cheap ones don't contain the silicones and um, oils that the more expensive ones do. And then just go over it with the Mod Podge and you'll be good. Or you can wax your page and um, I would just leave it as is. I really don't think, um, it's necessary in a lot of cases, unless you just need to even out like the tech, the shine or something like that. All right. And this quote by Mark Chagall, really, really like it. Um, I had to find another quote because after I tried the first video and it was way too long, I, um, I was like, uh-oh, now I need a new quote. I'm not going to have two, two pages with the same quote in it. All right. So now we're going to do some stamping and, um, I'm actually going to wipe, I'll wipe this glue away for the most part here. There we go. I, I dropped my baby wipe on the floor. <laughs> So that's down there right now. Um, so I got this stamp set that was really cute um, from Joann's when I ordered my those templates. And it's got an ink bottle with a skull and crossbones. But hey, we're going to use markers so we don't have to use that part. Um, so it's a Halloween set you can get a little more use, use with. And it's also got a feather. 
So I just love that ink bottle. That's pretty much why I got the set and it was 40% off as well. So I figured, oh, why, why not? What the heck? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rainbow order down here on top of where I gessoed. That's all dry now. And using a marker to stamp. This is all you do. You just color it with a marker. Um, I'm going to stamp. And you want to use water-based markers for this. And you can even use, um, you know, the kids' Crayola markers. I really like the... Um, the memento markers, those are really nice. <sighs> Gotta breathe on it before you do it. Make sure it's gonna stick really good. And um, but yeah, you know, use use whatever water-based markers you have. You can use the pit pens, which are an India ink. And I do get questions about the India ink versus regular water-based ink. India ink is permanent. When it dries, it's got a shellac in it. So uh, that's a big difference. But as far as like um, coloring on your markers and doing those techniques, you can use both. So if you were looking for a permanent marker, you didn't want like the alcohol. You want to be able to color on your stamps. Um, that's a really good choice. I have noticed huge price differences on the pit pens. Like those, the Stampers Big Brush pens are the most expensive. And if you find them marketed towards crafters, they seem to be more expensive. But um, I've seen them at like Blick in their catalog for pretty cheap. So, you know, you just need to know where to look. And I'm just going in rainbow order across. And I'll show you how to make them a little bit brighter if, uh, if you're not happy with... The results you're getting. This is one of my favorite techniques. It's better than doing stamp surgery because, um, you know, I could go in there with a knife and cut that skull and crossbones out, but then I wouldn't have it for, um, for you know, a Halloween stamp. I figured it's just better, better and more versatile if I just, um, if I just keep it as is and color around it with the markers. And since I'm going in rainbow order, um, I'm not changing very drastically between colors. I don't even have to clean my stamp in between colors. Now if I went right to yellow from this, I would definitely have to clean it. But since I am, uh, and I probably will, I'll probably do yellow again or something on the end and need to need to clean it. But you know, if you're just going kind of like one step up, you're all right. All right, so see, now I'm going to go back to yellow. So I'm going to have to clean this. Otherwise, I'm going to ruin my, my marker. So what I actually do is usually stamp it off a couple times and then wipe it off with a rag. This ra oh, I got a clean rag here. Even better. The other ones are kind of covered with glitter right now. Let's see. What are we doing for time? 12 minutes. Not too bad. Gosh, I always, I'm always surprised at how long these pages take because when I'm doing it, it doesn't feel like it takes any time at all. And then I look at the camera and it's like, oh my gosh, I've been gabbing for 20 minutes. Good grief. All right. And another thing I want to share with you, if you are using like a, a marker and you do notice you've got some color on the nib, so I could see I got some green on the nib probably because there was some residue on the stamp. What I'll do is grab just a scrap of paper and just scribble it until it comes clean. And you want to do that right when you right when it happens so that you can um, remove that before it, before it sets. So there, now my nib is nice and clean. See that? So yeah, I'm trying to share as many tips and tricks as I can during these videos so that if you find yourself kind of in a situation, you'll know how to get out of it. All right, so now we can go through with my markers that I've used and I can um, add a little add a little more color if I feel like I want it brighter. So you can really go over and color it over again and get a super bright look. This yellow is going to be the hardest one to show up because it's it's such a light color but the other ones respond really well to this. So you can go ahead and go over any um, of your stamped images that you think could benefit from it. And you don't have to do every bit. You might just like kind of outline it a bit or just kind of enhance it a little bit. And the nice thing about this, this uh, kind of not inking the middle is that you get a really cool area where you can like stamp some letters. You can stamp a word or something. So it's almost like you've got a cool a cool new alphabet as well. I like those um, dollar alphabet sets. You can get them at the craft store or at Walmart. They're just made by that Studio G, Studio G company and um, they have all these little fonts, tiny little stamp sets for dollar and they're on wood. They're these right here. They're so handy. I, um, I always grab them when I see a new font that I don't have that I like because I just find them so useful. And let's see, what are we doing? 14 minutes. Okay. So it's not like I was opposed to this video being really long, but I just felt for the amount of techniques you're learning, having it be more than 20 minutes was just, I was just asking you to give up too much of your life to watch that video. 
so yeah we'll do it a little bit quicker this time I feel like it'd be a little bit smoother second time around too all right I could spell the word create in there or something like that I'll have to think on that and then I want to have a um we want to have a feather coming out of that first one and since it's coming out of a yellow bottle I'm going to use its opposite which is purple to make it look a little bit more lively see the lovers of their opposites I'm just coloring in on my stamp here with the purple marker doesn't want to stick that well oops hang on a moment all right I am back that was my husband on the phone <laughs> he got a notification that his UPS package had come he had ordered some more wood for his wood making endeavors um, he had to laugh because on the little note from the uh, UPS guy it said uh, package left in garage met customer woman <laughs> I'm like oh customer I am customer woman <laughs> that was funny he did too all right so I've colored that with purple and I think you know you know what looks good together purple and teal I have a little teal in there just cuz just because it's my page and I'm the boss of it I'm the boss of you page all right I'm gonna breathe on this to re-moisten the ink and really hope it stamps well sometimes it doesn't <sighs> being that close to the edge and um, and whatnot so I am going to press it down really well and hold it to the paper for um, a few seconds to make sure that um, marker ink has had a good chance to transfer over all right look at that I think that's gonna be good let's see no, not too bad now again I'm gonna go in with my two marker colors and I am going to give it a little bit of a detail I find that um, I get a little bit better stamping results if I'm working on the side of my journal that doesn't have too many finished pages in it because then I get um, I don't have as many lumps and bumps but even so I, I don't count on having perfect stamping clear stamps do tend to work a little bit better in the journal just because they have a little more squish to them I think but um, I'm also not really looking for perfect stamping I'm kind of looking for fun and I kind of like it if it looks a little grungy and not perfect I'm totally all right with that all right so what else did I want to show you with this page I think that was pretty much it um, let's see I want to stamp something in here R A I N B O W. I can stamp rainbow I'll stamp the word rainbow all right so I've got my little stamps here I'll use my stays on again hopefully it's got caps been off it for a little while so hopefully that works pretty well hopefully it's not all dried out that sucker dries out I'm telling you what rainbow we've got three minutes can I stamp the word can I spell the word rainbow in three minutes let's see R sometimes I'll make a, I'll make a little origami box it's a little bit bigger than these sets so that I can get the stamps in and out of them easier R -A. Um, I should pause it I'm not a very good speller can't do two things at once all that well you know look I got a big ink smudge but I'm not gonna worry about it I'm really not gonna but I'm gonna pause it and finish stamping this in because oh my gosh that's tedious and remember to put the liner and the cap on top of your stays on pad when you are done otherwise it will dry out and make you miserable can make you miserable anyway that's just the kind of ink pad it is all right so I'm taking a wet brush and actually I wanted to just do a little more to this so I didn't really want to add more heavy ink so I'm just taking my wet brush and it's reactivating some of the ink that's just kind of hanging out there on the paper and it's gonna I'm just giving it a little bit freer more watercolor look this way sometimes you just kind of have to look at a page for a second and say what is it that it just needs something what does it need and a lot of times it's just a little futzing around with it and that's then you're going to be in business I also want to use a black pen and, and give a little definition to some of those ink bottles there so let's see I'll use this uh, number 808 oh, micron and I'm just going to go around I'm not going to do everything just kind of give it a little bit of a outline in some of these if you like this video I do hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe and check out some of the other mixed media fun videos that I have uploaded over the past couple of months really it's so much fun I think everyone should have, a, have an art journal because it's a great way to express yourself and to um, to learn some new techniques without the pressure of coming up with something that is you know showcaseable thank you so much for watching thumbs up and subscribe and check out my other videos and share and care and let everybody know that you love mixed media sure why not <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.